Matt, thank you. Welcome to College Football Primetime on ESPN, presented by Hampton, by Hilton. In a week's time here in Athens, they've gone from everybody hurts to night swimming. Georgia off its first loss of the season came against South Carolina. Now homecoming today is drenched against Kentucky. Georgia's got to win it to stay in the college football playoff discussion, and they nailed the forecast. Rain. Boy, that's right. It's a resolute rain. Maybe the equalizer here in Athens, and the lucky one of us downstairs inside of it with Kestick. Yeah, raining cats and dogs, so to speak. You know, the field is actually held up well during warm-ups. It's really firm and cut tight. Traction was not the issue. The problem was ball security. I saw imperfect spirals, saw a lot of drops, and a wet football is going to be a disaster for quarterbacks and, and centers. The wind, less than anticipated. It, it flares up, but it's really not the storyline right now. The wetness is. Uh, Quint, look, Georgia turned it over four times last week. If turnovers are a problem again today, they got to play better than that to stay in the college football playoff discussion. Well, Georgia is still in the hunt. You know, they have the one loss. They now have no margin for error whatsoever. But everyone was concerned the way the offense played last week, particularly the passing attack. Three picks by Jake Fromm, and then the receivers, particularly the young receivers, struggled on the outside. So the challenge is to get the passing attack going for later in the season, but we may not see a whole lot of throwing today with this weather and with an offensive line that may be the best in the business. On the other side, Kentucky is a team that just broke a three-game losing streak and a dangerous kid in Lynn Bowden Jr. Yeah, you're talking about a guy who, who's you know, Mr. Versatile can play everything. He's going to be a quarterback. He may be a little wide receiver, but he's dynamic. And so that's the hope. The rain may equalize this and turn this into a running attack. And Kentucky feels like they can hang with that. Here comes Georgia between the hedges. Still a powerhouse crowd, even with the deluge of Nestor, Georgia, and Kentucky coming up from Athens. He pulled it! Unbelievable! South Carolina wins! One loss doesn't define our season. We just keep going. Treat every game like a playoff game. That's really what it is. Got to treat every game like a playoff game because with one more loss, the hopes to get back to the college football playoff for the Dogs a couple years removed would go away completely. That said, according to FPI and a number of people who are well acquainted with the numbers here, Kirby Smart's team certainly controls its own destiny to get back into the college football playoff, especially with a game remaining against Mizzou, the team leading the SEC East. I think that's right when you think about what's ahead of them. There, there's no margin for error, but the real question becomes, can they get back to playing Georgia style of offense? And that is a big physical offensive line with some of the best running backs in college football. Last week, they went away from their identity. They threw it 51 times. You just don't see that with Georgia. Maybe the rain guides them there. This is a weather pattern with a work ethic. It is going to be persistent tonight in Athens as the dogs and Wildcats get together in a drenching rain. Grant McKinnis tees it up. James Cook is back to receive. Off we go. On a couple of hops, bobbled by Cook. His leg falls on it, and he dives on the ball. So play number one, we have a mishandle and post-play stuff going on. It's exactly what Quinn talked about in the open. Handling the ball could be difficulty, and there's that man from who actually dropped a snap last week against South Carolina. Here's the scouting report on Jake from the quarterback from his safety, J.R. Reed. Best thing about Jake is he's always happy and always has a smile on his face. The worst thing about Jake is his singing. It is absolutely terrible. He evidently sings under his breath all the time around the facility, <laughs> everywhere, low places, he says in his karaoke song. Uh, but a guy that needs to get back on track on the field as well after a multi-interception game last week. 
DeAndre Swift on the first play has a Georgia first down into the secondary off a gain of 14. I, I don't think J.R. Reed was too happy with the fact that Fromm tends to take popular rap and hip hop songs and sings them in a country manner. Yeah. But he's from Warner Robins. He's a local hero. He wanted to go to Georgia. He found his way to Georgia, and he's won this quarterback competition now for years, even though he was under siege from guys all the way across the United States. Swift gets fed again, and this run game will be important as he runs over Cedric Dort Jr., the corner. Yeah, th this is getting back to who they are, and you talked about Fromm, and Fromm had arguably the worst game of his career last week. Three picks, threw it 51 times, and he just didn't look like himself, but, you know, he's shooting shoulder all the play. He had some young receivers who didn't do the things they were supposed to, and quite honestly, were probably responsible for two of the three picks that he had. Imprecise routes. Yep. Not the exact science that Fromm's computer in his mind tends to calculate. And he's without Lawrence Cager today, out with a rib injury after the shoulder stuff he'd been dealing with the past couple of weeks. They work out of the shotgun and give it again for Swift. So it's been all DeAndre Swift, the junior out of Philly, on this drive so far. Yeah, not a surprise that Georgia comes out pounding the football behind what may be the best offensive line in college football. And you think about Swift, a dynamic back, 1,000-yard rusher last season, on pace for that again this season, and had a nice game last week against South Carolina. The pedigree of running backs here at Georgia is vast. Third and three for Fromm. He throws for the first time today, and this is going to be short of the marker for George Pickens, who came back for the ball, gave ground, and it's fourth down. Well, it gets back to the issue of young receivers. There's another freshman in Pickens, and did you run your route deep enough? Did you cut it off? That was an issue last week, and he was a little bit short of the marker there. Looks. You guys like the punt here? They're booing. Uh, it's the first series of the game in your own territory. The weather is bad. Anything could go wrong. Yeah, you kick the ball away now. That's the right call. It. You, but you're Georgia. You're running back. <laughs> you get a yard, right? Yeah, well, you didn't get it on second down. That's Short true. on third down. Very true. Ali back to receive Camarda's punt. And that is a blast by Camarda that ends up through the end zone. So for Kentucky, the question has been, who is the quarterback going to be? They turn to Lynn Bowden Jr. with an injury to Sawyer Smith to play quarterback last week. The wide receiver turned quarterback, and the former high school quarterback is going to lead him out again today. A young man who has a family of his own. They call his son, Lynn Bowden III, a oh, little Lynn. And there he is. How adorable. Yeah. He's so cute. Uh, we spent some time with Lynn Bowden Jr. this week, and his story is one that you want to stick around for throughout the game because he is a wonderful young man who's dealt with so much during his life, and he credits his son, actually, for helping him focus himself as he takes the first snap. And A.J. Rose dives forward to set up second down. But Bowden's going to be everywhere on the field today, whether it's quarterback or wide receiver. Well, just to make the move midseason from receiver to quarterback when he hasn't been a quarterback since high school and to be asked to, to take charge of a team that wants to be in a bowl game this year, won 10 games last year, it's a lot of pressure and a lot of, you know, team unity for him to make that sacrifice. Some folks in Lexington said he saved their season last week, breaking a three-game losing streak. They use the mesh there, and Josh Ali gets submarined for a first down at the 30. And what you get from Bowden at quarterback is a dynamic athlete, a guy who can change directions. He's got great speed. He can accelerate, and he's tougher than you think. He can carry the ball inside, and he had a huge week last week in their win over Arkansas. So Bowden's going to work at the receiver spot rose in the wildcat formation now Bowden in motion to join him in the backfield bells and whistles from big blue early on and rose trudging for not much 
Malik Herring drives it back. Now that's got to be a little tweak, a little wrinkle added to cause a little bit of confusion for Georgia to make them stop and think. You got a Wildcat guy. Now you got a quarterback who comes back into the frame who's a Wildcat guy himself. It was interesting talking to Kirby Smart and Dan Lanning this week because they said, look, we've never seen two polar opposite quarterbacks like Sawyer Smith and like Lynn Bowden Jr. They had to plan for two distinct options at quarterback. I, I don't know of many teams that have had a quarterback problem the way Kentucky has had this season with all of the injuries. And moving on the right side of the line. It's like Justin Rigg, the junior tight end. It was not Bowden's idea coming into this season to be a quarterback. In fact, he's leading the team in receptions this year. He comes in with 30 catches. And coming into this season, it's funny you mentioned, he told us, Bowden did, that he had some thoughts about not even returning this year. He went back home, was thinking it over. His coaches said, Please come on back. We want to have you here. It's your family. Well, coaches and players texted him daily to get him back. This is Bowden. The dynamic do everything guy for Kentucky, and he hops through to the 35. You, you see that? That's what we're talking about. I mean, you're talking about a guy who, even on a wet surface, can stop on the dime, can change direction, can accelerate with one step. You know, that's why he is so talented and destined to be a guy who plays a lot more football when he's done in Kentucky. Kentucky hasn't scored on an opening drive whether it's with Bowden at quarterback whether it's Walker Wood Terry Wilson Sawyer Smith anybody hasn't happened facing a wall of sound on third and four. Bowden wrapped up and dropped. Tay Crowder sized him up, and it's fourth down. Uh, Georgia certainly keying on Bowden on this play, and you see the linebackers moving right in right away. That's Crowder, number 30, leveraging from the outside, making sure that he's got him inside, trying to corral him, and you got to have a couple guys around him. Max Duffy is a tremendous punter. And he ships this one all the way back to the 11-yard line, but returnable for Blaylock up the sideline. And Georgia gets better field position, although a flag has come in. There's a flag inside the 20-yard line, so the net of 32 in the balance. With John McDade, our referee, ready to make a call. See the wind whipping the referee jersey. Kirby Smart. Ripping one of his bulldogs over on the sideline. That was Prather Hudson on the return team getting an earful from Kirby Smart. It is a rainy one in Athens. No score. Georgia and Kentucky. See on ESPN. Sizable crowd despite the rain from Nestor. As we take a look at tonight's impact players, brought to you by Chick fil A. Here's the cow. A wet cow. Well, Wagner 14 is going to have to have a game, make some catches, and Cash Daniel knows what it's like to play against this rushing offense of Georgia. He's had some problems with them. DeAndre Swift, oh, you know about him. He's a star. And J.R. Reed quarterbacks that Georgia defense. Swift coming off his. 156 yards last year against Kentucky. They ran rough shot against the Wildcats rush defense last year in this game for the SEC East. Fromm had loads of time and he checks it down for Harrion, who's down staff for a short game. That's a great example of, of Fromm's mind, his vision, his brain. He looks deep to Pickens to his left, nothing doing. Looks across the middle, not there, and then checks it down. I, I don't think I've seen a quarterback who can get to his fourth progression uh, like Fromm can. Well, that offensive line gives him time. That's a great thing. The bad news is that receivers aren't getting open. 
First time he ever really got his uniform dirty all year was the three sacks last week against South Carolina. He'll go out of the backfield for James Cook, who uh -oh. has stood up. My goodness. Jamar Watson. Boogie. What a play. You talk about taking on a blocker and then just driving him right back into the into the play. This is outstanding football. You know, he reads this, he's understanding it, and he goes, I'm driving you right back. Can't block me. Right back into Cook, the ball carry. With one arm. That's pretty, that's pretty good. That's a lot of strength. You hold off one blocker with one and make a tackle with the other arm. He's a guy trying to replace Josh Allen. First round pick by the Jaguars to the NFL. Third down and eight for Fromm. And he sails it. Incomplete. Wet ball tonight. Yeah. You got to keep the, the football dry. You know, there are a couple things that the weather changes for you. For example, Georgia will do almost everything from the shotgun. They don't want to take any snaps under center. And then you have to keep the ball dry. And there you see, look at the way he flips that football. Yeah, I, th I think Robertson almost kind of hesitated as if he was going to sit down. And Fromm thought he was going to continue across the field. Second punt for Camarda and Georgia. Ali backpedaling. Ali to midfield and beyond. So Kentucky has good field position after a return of 19. ESPN College Football is presented by Hampton by Hilton. College football stays here. Book now at Hampton.com. And in part by Mazda, feel alive. This is what the campus looked like here at Georgia before all the rain today. This was yesterday, Hurdy Field. First football game for Georgia, 1892 there. You saw that arch before. The superstition is if you run through the arch or walk through it, uh, you get a poor grade on a test. Quint decided to run directly through it this weekend. What's going to happen to you? Why'd you do it? Uh, I, maybe I can retroactively edit my transcript. Yeah, this is why you're getting rained on. You brought this. Oh, big <laughs> hit from the safety lookout. The same windows of opportunity that existed for this Kentucky run offense last weekend against Arkansas, not there today. Too much speed in this front seven. You've got safeties who step up and play the run. This is a different game for Kentucky. The team speed for Georgia stands out. That was Kentucky's sixth consecutive run to open the game. With the former high school quarterback Lynn Bowden Jr. running the offense, also the top receiver on this team. Now he wants to throw and he bails on it. Well, the opportunity for Kentucky in the passing game is, is really to throw on first and second down and really to get matchups with the linebackers Crowder and Rice. You know, they, they can get their backs on them. They are not the best pass defenders, they're great run defenders. But when you get to third down, this is a problem. This is not what Bowden is designed to do at quarterback, unless it's a drop back scramble. Third down nine. Sprint out for Bowden. He's got the option. He's going to run it, and he's inside the 40, setting up a possible fourth down and short for Kentucky. You going? Well, you're almost in no man's land here. If you're Kentucky, if you think you got the right play, yeah, you can take a shot. It's not going to work with a field goal in this situation. And probably not a great place to punt unless you are so confident that your punter can deaden it inside the 10 here. Kentucky is 5 for 10 on fourth down this year. Yeah, this, is, this is a good call. And a whistle before the snap. Timeout, Kentucky. We'll see if they come out to run a play with Mark Stoops after this. College football primetime is brought to you by Hampton by Hilton. With more than 2,500 locations, you can follow your team anywhere, and maybe Reese will be there.
Uh, it is That'd be cool. Yeah, it'd be great. What a bonus, right? Uh, nasty night here. Fourth and two for Kentucky. They just used a timeout. What do you think? There's Eddie Grand making the decision. He probably didn't like what he saw in the Georgia defense. But hey, don't the analytics say that you go here? Yes. Absolutely. A skilled athlete, Lynn Bowden Jr., out of the shotgun on fourth and two. Yep, that ends that. Man. on Logan Stenberg, the left guard. Chalk one up to the crowd. This place is loud. These fans are rowdy. Not in a good mood tonight with the rain and last week's result. And well, their presence is felt. Well, Q, if you're sitting in the rain, don't you have to move around and make noise to kind of get comfortable? You don't want to sit there and just get drenched, right? D tackle stunt and the noise combination. One other factor, have you ever seen a happy wet dog? The huh? answer is no. It's a crowd full of dogs here. They're drenched. <laughs> There's a flag in as this punt goes bounding inside the 10 from Duffy. 37 yard punt. We'll see if it stands. I believe uh, Tropical Storm Nestor has decided to have some fun with Mr. McDade's microphone. It is an illegal formation against Kentucky. They'll have to do it again, but they have the right guy to do it in Duffy, who's been tremendous this year. You always are a little bit concerned if you're a Kentucky fan. Wet ball snap here. Things can happen in these situations. You don't want to have to repunt. You don't have to. Don't want to fake it either if you watched the Arkansas game earlier. Duffy sends it bouncing out of bounds and that worked out well for Georgia as it's going to be right at the 20 yard line. So just a 28 yard punt from Duffy and Jake Fromm who's been very accurate all year at 70 percent. But you mentioned it before he's got this core of young receivers and he's trying to balance pushing them with also letting them go out and play and do their thing. Yeah but he's got a challenge with weather also today. You know they got to keep the football dry and he has this this habit of flipping the ball you know and rotating it when he gets ready to throw and he has to be careful with that in this weather. As you mentioned he had you know four turnovers last week including one snap. They've tried to deal with the snap by having the shotgun in place today. DeAndre Swift to the right side and a nice tackle by Jamari Brown to set up second down. This is earlier. Yeah just to give you a sense of what we're talking about. Watch from as he drops back watch his hands watch what he does with the football. Takes it. Flips it. He keeps flipping to find the spot he likes. He says it's a habit he's had his entire life. The coaches wanted him to get rid of it for this game because of the weather. Coaches as they were leaving our meeting said why don't you ask him about that when you talk to him because <laughs> we can't get through to him. And the habit continues. Keep it on the ground and Harrion who's back from eight lines sets up a three down. Line one of them. Jason he told us he does that because he's got sweaty hands. Yeah I, that's that's part of him. You see him using the uh, hand warmer tonight it's. I don't know what the temperature reads 52 it feels a lot more raw and chilled down here on the field and it's it's been a warm fall in Athens so this is unusually cool. Well Q they've got to find a way for their freshman receivers their young receivers to win on third down teams have been playing them press coverage and they haven't figured out how to beat it yet. They run. Wow, that's going to draw some booze. Oh here yeah, in Athens. Yeah, that, that's that's conceding on third down. That with a veteran quarterback, a guy who is arguably going to be a first-round pick whenever he comes out, that you're not going to throw the ball on a third and four, third and five, and give him a chance to do it. And that has to be because of a lack of confidence on the guys on the outside. Plus the rain. It, 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 that strikes me as one of those downs where if Lawrence Cager was playing, you'd yeah. go right there. Right. The Cager is. 
Got banged up. Was it ribs, ribs for him? Yeah, he's out this ball game. Shoulder prior to the rib injury. Ali watches it bounce out of bounds. We will be back in exactly one minute to Athens. That's Aga 10 and next Saturday number eight Notre Dame against number 16 Michigan from the big house 730 Eastern on ABC Notre Dame hasn't won in Ann Arbor since 2005 they're three and eight there since 1989 the Big Ten just got uh, its apple card upset earlier Ooh, on yeah. Wisconsin goes Ooh. down on a last second field goal for the Illini. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Last week Georgia this week Wisconsin. We may not be done for the day. There may be more. Maybe Alabama directly after our game. Well, I'm not going to go that far. Just conjecture. Steve Levy and his crew will have the call right after this game. We stay in the SEC. This is Cavassier Smoke. Let me ask you this. If yeah. you're a Georgia fan, are you a little bit nervous? Yes. You're and nervous smoke when you saw the down, forecast. Yeah. But yeah, smoke is injured. Yeah, you've been almost through the first quarter here as you take a look at smoke. And your offense has not distinguished itself, particularly in the passing game. And this is a Kentucky team that the last two years you've dominated on the ground more than 700 total yards rushing the last two years. And you haven't been able to really convert on third down today. No, and your, your six carries 28 yards for the moment as we see how smoke went down and got hurt. Yeah, it looks like he came down on that left elbow. Talented freshman Cavassier smoke in the state of Alabama. Now Chris Rodriguez replaces him, another freshman from here in Georgia on a second and five. Kobe Dean creeping up to the line initially. Well, here comes an additional man in the box. Rodriguez gets not much. It'll be third down and about four. Rodriguez, the youngest player on this team, turned 18 September the 26th. Oh, here's another third down for you. Kentucky, what do you do here? I think you're right, considering that. Well, they did have Bowden drop back once before in third and scramble. Gives him a lot of lanes when he does that. Trying to run. And he throws it out of bounds incomplete. Discretion the better part of valor so far for both offenses on a wet track. Yeah tremendous job by Georgia bringing Crowder on a little game so he came to the outside to build a fence to keep Bowden from being able to get outside. If you like punting you've come to the right place so far <laughs> six possessions six punts two first down who, who likes punting other than the parents or the punter. I know Pat McAfee does he's screaming about it every Thursday night. Oof. We got to talk to him. Good for the brand. We got to talk to him about that. Laylock back to receive from Duffy and that chases him all the way back inside the five and it does roll into the end zone so it is a touchback. Duffy blasted off again on a 69 yard punt and we mentioned the earlier games Wisconsin goes down in the top ten Florida Kyle Trask was outstanding in the second half at South Carolina. Yeah you start thinking about the SEC East and it's hard to not imagine Florida being there at the end with possibly Georgia. Don't forget about Missouri yet, but Florida seems to be getting better every week. Missouri's got a little mess on its hands right now at Vanderbilt. Yeah. We saw the halftime score with 14 to 7 Commodores, but LSU just throttled Mississippi State, too. I, we'll see if anybody can beat LSU after that win against Florida last week. Harry in the tailback after missing last week with a back strain. And he tried to keep the legs driving. Gets about three and a half. Yeah, this is not going to work for Georgia. 
They, they've got to open it up and throw in early downs. Right now, Kentucky has said, you know what? We'll take away your receivers by getting in their face, man to man, press coverage, and we'll let everybody else focus on the run. And you see what happens. You know, they get three yards here, so we'll see. I mean, will they change it up and take some shots and try to get the receivers going or stay on the ground? Jake Fromm so far, Rod, three for four for four yards. Swift to the fringe. They went to the short side. It's third down coming up. Talk about stopping wide receivers. Tennessee, Alabama coming up. Nine Eastern time. Very difficult to stop those Alabama wide receivers on a <laughs> nightly basis. Yeah. They've got a, a trio of receivers that will all be playing on Sundays. Formationally, Georgia's got to do a little more with their receivers to get them off a of press. Motion, stacks, bunches. Stationary here on a third and four cue. Showing blitz. Clock ticking on quarter number one. And this will go for a first down for Pickens, but he tried to give it back again. First down Georgia, first third down conversion of the first quarter ends the first quarter. The rain between the hedges has been persistent. No score after one in a game Georgia needs badly. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Poncho stock is up 300 points here at Sanford <laughs> Stadium as Georgia and Kentucky are scoreless. And here is why. Yeah, if you are a Kentucky fan, you like the way this is going. If you're a Georgia fan, you are nervous. From four of five for eight yards passing, and First Kentucky and has a bead on the rushing attack of Georgia. Some of that's the weather, but if you're a Georgia fan, you don't want to hear it after losing last week to South Carolina only scoring 17 points. This is Cook who's chopped down and Matt Barry in the studio has a Pac-12 update. Matt thank you Huskies are driving right now with under four to go. In a wild one that could be the end of the Pac 12's possibilities in the college football playoff, and a loss for Oregon would help Georgia's hopes and a couple other one loss teams, you'd imagine. DeAndre Swift getting to the second level. He's got a first down for the dogs. What a terrific job on the right side of that line. You get a great block by the right tackle, Wilson, kicking out there. You see the very end of it. And great acceleration by Swift getting in behind that. Georgia's had great success running left this year behind Thomas and Kindley, but here they've chosen right a couple of times to success. From under siege, drops it off. Shoestring grab and Swift would have been better off letting it hit the ground. DeAndre Square for a loss of seven with the stop. The freshman All-American in the SEC last year. Yeah, but the play was made up front with the pressure right away on From. Really good effort getting inside there by Carter putting pressure on him. And he just did everything he could. From did to get rid of the ball. But you're right. Swift should have let that go. But how about this Kentucky defense? They are now threatening. Here's this press coverage we're talking about down here. Matched up there. That's Eccles against Pickens. And they'll go the other way off the screen. And it's blown up one more time. Yeah, they're, they're rallying and the fans are, fans are not happy. They are not happy. They've seen their Georgia team ranked number three fall to number 10. And they've seen the passing attack stifled last week by South Carolina. And so far tonight, nothing going. From is seven for eight with seven yards. Seven yards. Yeah. They're serving the same menu every week. 
it's the same predictability. Run on first down, second down screen, draw. Yeah, I'm with you, Q. Similar formations. Yeah, they, they've got to throw the ball on early downs a little bit because Kentucky is playing and loading the box for the run on first down. Georgia is a very good draw team. This third and long, they'll throw. Brown has loads of time and it's batted away. Eccles with those long arms stabbing it in front of Pickens. Yeah, you said it. Great coverage by Eccles. He had plenty of time to come in and make the play. That's a long, long throw. He's in great position. All the time that Fromm has, that's all the time Eccles has to see through the receiver to the ball. See that? Perfect timing, perfect play. And that hand down low, perfect. Perfect to have that hand on the hip. That is not pass interference. Ali watches it fly away. This is a punter tape for the NFL. At the very least, if you're scouting special teamers, maybe you go there while you watch the game, you NFL folks. Fromm and Georgia scoreless through 18 minutes. The game day guys were pretty well convinced. You heard it. They were kind of they were kind of hedging their bet, right? They love Matt Rule, but they think Oklahoma State's going to win that game. Yeah, yeah. They were basically saying Baylor was overrated. Please, what they did so far, but it's over with. Yeah, yeah, right. Huh? We'll see. Yeah, right. We'll see. Yeah, Baylor's not going anywhere yet. Well coached, unbeaten team in the Big 12. As Kentucky gets it back in a very low scoring and low yardage environment, Bowden drilled a loss of half a yard, seven possessions, seven punts, 380 punt yards, 84 total yards in our game so far. Yeah, there you go. Well, we can blame a little bit of this on the weather, not all of it. You can blame a lot of it on play selection. You get it with Kentucky. And they they've gone with a running quarterback and they'll be content to have this game 0 0 for as long as possible. Oh yeah. That's how Oregon State did it back in the 60s in the rain against Southern Cal. Use the weather to your advantage. Keep the score muted. And it looked like 15 Georgia Bulldogs were there. LeCount led the charge and it's third down. And, and this becomes the issue for Kentucky. They don't want to be in third and long. It's not the most comfortable position for Bowden to be in. I mean, you're not going to throw intermediate passes over the middle. In the middle of the field for a guy who hasn't played a lot of quarterback, I mean, it's really dark and full of terrors. Wet terrors. Yes. But draw plays, screen plays, let him scramble, that might get you something. It's a wide receiver turned quarterback, Lynn Bowden Jr., who played quarterback for the Boca High School in Youngstown, Ohio, against Georgia here. Third down, long ball down the sideline, and caught! No, it's sprung free at the last moment. Stokes ripped it away from Wagner. Tremendous play by Stokes, but a tremendous throw by Bowden to give Wagner a chance. Give him a chance to make a play. And the ball came out at the end. But how about Stokes hanging in there? Now, little hand fighting, no one's going to call that. But he fought through the end to get the ball out. It's okay to be beaten as the defensive back can't stay beaten, though. Well done by Stokes. Would have been a 37 yard gain. And Kentucky flips the field in a massive way inside the 20. It's a 58 yard punt for Duffy. Hey, tomorrow, NFL countdown, 10 a.m. Eastern. It'll be 72 and sunny inside the studio. Randy Moss, best catches from college football this weekend. Peyton Manning gets a showboating lesson from Deion Sanders. That'll be fun. Jalen Ramsey with a sit down as well after his trade. Monday Night Football then, Patriots and Jets, 8 Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app coverage starts with Monday Night Countdown at 6. New England's won 15 of 17. They basically run the AFC East. The Bills never lose to them. The Jets never lose to them. Well, let's see if Georgia switches up here. See the guys that they have in the box. A lot of guys around the line of scrimmage. Seven of them. It's a pass from Fromm. And he's on target for Pickens. 
across the 40 yard line in the arms of Cash Daniel. First down, Georgia, first explosive play. Yeah, exactly what the fans were calling for. A little play action on first down. You've been running the ball on first down forever. Now, get those linebackers inside. You see Cash Daniels was inside, now chasing Pickens. Nice job by Georgia, switching it up, changing their play calling. Great touch by Fromm. They've talked about trying to find ways to get George Pickens the ball. A crashing run for Swift at second down, Georgia. Well, going to have a little trouble with that when you have the safeties coming in. You see that was Corker 29. He is just sniffing out the run every single play. He's looking to be the extra guy who gets near the line of scrimmage, a free hitter to make the tackle. Yeah, Rod, you do the math. You go man to man on the outside, and the quarterback's not a running threat. That allows you to stack the box in yep. Kentucky. Yep, they've got the extra guys, Q, and that's what Corker 29 has become. This throw to the outside sails and is incomplete. Eccles was there third down as the rain drives even harder on this drive. You know, we talked to Coley about the receivers, the young receivers, and how they've struggled with press coverage, you know, and, and they've been somewhat passive. You know, they're okay. They can fight back to get off press coverage. You can use your hands to knock away the defender. You can use your quickness, but you just can't sit there and allow the def defensive back to dictate everything. Any time wasted is a win for the defense when you're in press coverage. Crowd wanted a flag there. You heard Up the here. roar. Right up there. Fromm has to tuck it and run. Fromm is very close to the line to gain. Very close. Remember the yellow line is not decisive. Very heads up play by Fromm sensing the opening knowing exactly where the first down marker is. And it is a first down. How about Kinley there driving downfield with his block. They're happy to have him back at the left guard spot. They've run the ball substantially better when he's been in the lineup. Well, we've seen a lot of personnel Early changes. In the previous play is that the runner made the line to the game for a first down. On that Georgia offensive line. Review. We've seen Mays move over to the left side at times with Cleveland in at the right guard. Let's see if this is a first down. They got to get to about the 49 and a half. Remember where you start your slide. And he didn't slide. He just no. went there. So let's see Where's where the, the legs down. Oh, hand down, ball. elbow down. Well, looks like hand down, elbow down on that line. Where's the ball, though? Yeah, it looks like the ball in his right arm is actually right around the 50 yard line. Now we're guessing well, there based on that, but replays looking at no, all no, relevant he, angles. The, the thing that's clear is that his hand and the elbow are at the 50 yard line. The ball is probably short of that. Right. Because of the way he fell. The leg's down as well. The leg yeah. comes down just about the same time as the elbow. Yeah, it, it wouldn't surprise me if they marked this back a little bit. But the ruling on the field is first down, so they'd need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. You're going for it. It's four, fourth and one, or are you going to punt? If they do move the spot back, we're talking about a possible fourth and one here. Analytics say go. Analytics always say go. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> it's freewheeling. Yeah. If, if I were Georgia and going to go here, the reason to go is that I feel good about my defense and I don't feel After threatened. After video review, the ball is down at the 50-yard line, short of the line to gain. This brings up fourth down. Yeah, I, I feel pretty good about my defense. I don't, I don't feel threatened by big pass plays from Kentucky, and I think my defense is good enough to handle a series or two, so I'd probably go for it here. You'd like to do a quarterback sneak. But from footing, they, footing. they mentioned yesterday trepidation about getting underneath center yeah. with a wet ball and yeah. a wet center. Yeah, footing was, is an issue and a snap cue, as you mentioned, if you go under center here. Yeah, I think it's counterintuitive what the coach has said that shotgun is easier in the rain because you know the center can get wet as well, just the body, and they are going to dry the ball off, you see. 
Look if you feel like you've got the best offensive line in college football and some of the best running backs you, you don't need to sneak it here. You turn around and you give it. Oh, they are going under center. This is something that we didn't think they would do. They sneak from yeah. is only at the 50 it looks like both officials coming in are at the 50 yard line. This can be a turnover on downs if that spot holds. Yeah. Yeah I, I don't get the sneak here when you've got this weather and you've avoided taking the taking the snap from center. It didn't look like a fully clean exchange either. That's exactly why you don't do it Q and they knew that they were they were perfectly aware of this problem. Oh that's way short. Yeah. I mean, that's not even a measurement. Yeah. Kentucky holds. Yeah. yeah. That, that's surprising, Q, that they would go to that when it was a big concern. We were at practice on Thursday, and they were doing a wet ball drill, and they had loads of problems with the center quarterback exchange, and so us they would probably stick with shotgun to avoid that problem. They mentioned it again yesterday in yeah. our meetings, yeah. and if he, that's the case they probably should have just gone wildcat a direct snap yep, for a running back. Yep. 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 You're right. Yeah. Uh, Fromm did not get that cleanly. For the first time in seven years that's happened. And a half. Bowden tucks it. Bowden with a stop. He looks up field now. Bowden is crashed down. And he'll be sacked in his own territory. Yeah. For, for Bowden it is one look for your receiver and take off. And the guy he wanted wasn't there and he was just trying to find a lane so he could take off. But that's the Go ahead, hey, Rod, I thought it was great when we spoke to Lynn this week and he says, you know, I'm kind of hard to tackle. Yeah, real hard to tackle. Some say that's the type of play that he was so good at last week against Arkansas. The scramble situation. Basically a lead play there and Bowden uh, you look at the type of guy Kirby Smart compared him to Heinz Ward but there are some other comparisons as well 20 rushes 10 plus passes and a punt return in the same game since 2000 look at this company. Well that tells me he's going to play a lot of football. He's pretty talented right Q Bowden scouts like him don't they. I mean Mel Kuyper said he could be a sneaky first round selection. He you think about he's the best athlete on the field in an SEC football game. Why not. Absolutely. Jordan Davis down for Georgia third and five for Kentucky when we come back. By General Mills bring more to your game day with General Mills tailgate recipes. See what you can create at we are tailgate nation dot com. Spikes there here at homecoming Friday and Sunday have great forecasts. Yesterday was wonderful. Tomorrow's supposed to be really nice. Today it's a downpour and the ponchos and the pads in the student section on a third down and five. And Bowden is out from quarterback. Rodriguez took the snap. It's a flip back and the throw from Ali is incomplete. Keaton upshaw the target so it went from Rodriguez through him ending up at Ali and upshaw couldn't grab it. Uh, Kentucky taking a couple of chances here a little trickeration in the rain wet football and all not too crazy about that. I thought they were in position for two plays a third and a fourth down play there but when you miss that one now you got to kick it away. You got to be careful when you have trickeration and. You really want to have that many people handle the football when the ball is wet. And that's a high snap. Duffy tracks it down beautifully and saves the day. Bouncing it inside the 15 and out of bounds at the 11. That's well done by the Aussie Duffy on a 34 yard kick with a rescue. Back here in Athens Georgia. And this season Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Mod Student Section of the Year. The Georgia Bulldogs Student Section is already on the national watch list. 
Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using hashtag live my student section contest. That becomes a drinking vessel that Horn does on a night sure like does. tonight. <laughs> uh, the rain is a major factor here. How much of a factor, Rod, in Georgia's past game? Look, you, you can throw in the rain. The advantage is with the offense. The defensive linemen, those big guys, they can't pass rush. Defensive backs have to play on the on their entire foot they can't play on the edges for fear of slipping so the offense has an advantage wind is a problem rain is OK so long as you keep the ball dry which the officials have been doing before plays today we haven't seen Swift in a while this is Zamir White on the first down run and Matt Barry in the studio as an update. Big game of the Big Ten after Wisconsin's loss earlier. Minnesota handling Rutgers easily, staying unbeaten for PJ Fleck. Could use a boat to row in the wa uh, water here. This is DeAndre Swift past the 30 and finally driven down at the 34. First down, Georgia. Yeah, nice little play to the right side. Great block by Wilson, 79. The right tackle. See him come back and get that block. And get it to the outside and it works for him. Yeah, I just I had this sense that Georgia is a little bit tight. You know, they seem tight against South Carolina. A little bit tight this game as well. What makes you think that? I, just not free and loose and and running and you know even throwing the ball. They just seem like they're a little bit more. Even maybe it's, maybe it's coached that way not to not to lose, not to make a mistake. And maybe that's what the good reason. Out of the pistol, Fromm has to cradle the ball on the ground. And after a big gain, it's a major loss. Yeah. You see, if I'm Georgia's coaching staff. I feel like the Kentucky offense isn't a big threat. They can't hurt me. The rain can hurt me because my guy can't handle a snap like that. Just a little high. That ball's got to be closer inside because of the weather. Kirby Smart said to us at the beginning of our meeting when we asked about the weather, he said big hands helps for a quarterback, and Jake Fromm isn't necessarily in that category. Well, hand size wasn't going to help you on that one. No. <laughs> that yeah. one's often to the side and a little high. Swift finds a crease. DeAndre Swift to short of midfield. A Georgia first down. He is gashing Kentucky. This one for 23. They do a great job on this left side. Great blocking by Warner, the tight end. Look at that hole that gets created there. Just huge for him. They did a good job of clearing things out. Warner, the tight end, took everybody inside. And then you get a kick out block, and Swift was off to the races. The strength of Kentucky's defense is inside. Quinton Bohanna, Calvin Taylor, middle linebacker Cash Daniel. Perimeter runs may be the answer for the dogs. You Cash mentioned Daniel. Yeah, yeah, he's the one down right now. Such an important linebacker, the senior out of the state of Kentucky in Paintsville. Cash Daniel is down. We'll check on him with Georgia driving when we come back. Yeah, Matt, thank you for that. It, elsewhere in the SEC, Mizzou's trailing Vandy right now, and that would be a gift for Georgia and everybody else in the SEC East. Well, that would give Missouri its first loss in the SEC. They would still be in position to be a threat to Georgia and Florida or to play spoiler. Georgia, if it wins out, has a very strong chance to go to the college football playoff as Harrion. Is short of midfield. Georgia still hasn't run a play in Kentucky territory so far in this game. Yeah, they they haven't had great field position. Starting at their own 20 was the best field position that they've had, but they still haven't been able to mount a consistent drive. Reluctant to throw the football, and Kentucky has loaded the box and really limited the rushing, except for the runs by DeAndre Swift. This guy right here, Corker. He's been sneaking into the box and making it difficult for Georgia to run inside. There's that perimeter run game Quint was talking about. Harry and flag comes in. There was a hold on the edge. 
the Kentucky sideline got pretty rambunctious, and if that flag didn't come in, there was going to be a get-back warning. Offense, ten-yard penalty, second down. It's on Warner, the tight end. You had your choice of Warner and Wilson. Both of them had their guys in bear hugs. You can get away with one, maybe. <laughs> Twin bear hugs, not a grand idea. <laughs> How about this? Last conference game tied at nothing at the half. LSU Bama 2016. Yeah, hey, we got a whole three minutes to go. <laughs> what what suggests to you that that would be different <laughs> than the first 27 minutes tonight? We can dream, right? <laughs> <laughs> we can hope. <laughs> Dreaming of points here in the rain in Athens along with you. <laughs> Quint Kestick melting downstairs. Quint very smartly did get his notes laminated before the game, though, knowing that the marker would run in the rain. Uh, and he dressed appropriately, too. It's not my first rodeo, gentlemen. <laughs> Just need that FedEx Kinko sponsorship. <laughs> Angling for it. From to throw after the holding penalty. From under siege. Now he tucks it. And Fromm is tackled at the waist by Corker. Nice open field tackle. Yeah, and you see all the time that Fromm has. That's part of the rain. It's hard for those defensive guys to get in him. But we talked about Corker sneaking into the box. There he is. Now he recognizes it's a pass. He is just all over the field. He makes a great open field tackle. He's got eight tackles already in this game. You know this means a little more to him. He is from McDonough, Georgia. About 90 minutes away. I would expect that he would not sneak in the box with this third and long here, but would get involved in pass coverage. See how many they bring. It's four. Fromm climbs the pocket again. Fromm goes down in the arms of Jamar Watson. Back to back passing plays where there's zero separation for yep. Georgia wide receivers downfield. Yeah. Q. This is not the first time they struggled last week. They struggled this week. Take a look. Just pick out any receiver you want. You tell me who's open. Who's open. There is nobody open anywhere. Showed you the whole field. All the receivers. Nobody open. He's had loads of time too. Well that's what happens in the rain. The big guys particularly the speed rushers can't pass rush. So it's good to pass so long as your guys can fight to get open. So Kentucky gets the ball on a halftime and they'll have it with about a minute left in this first half as we check in with Matt Berry in the studio. That includes Baylor against Oklahoma State. But look, Georgia right now controls its own destiny. Yep. FBI likes them if they win out, at, even after that loss to South Carolina. But this kind of football is not going to get the job done. Well, if you're too predictable on offense, I, I don't know how you beat Florida, Alabama, LSU. I mean, they're going to have to get that part of it figured out. Rodriguez the freshman does Georgia use timeouts to try to get the ball back. Absolutely. You forgot the knot. He's taking one. Oh there. He there we go. <laughs> the delayed reaction from Kirby Smart. Are you, are you suggesting that he saved six seconds there. Yeah a couple seconds. Be a off, second, off. Bleed off. second down and nine coming up. TJ's back for NFL primetime. His smiling face down there. 7:30 Eastern tomorrow, only on ESPN Plus. Highlights and breakdowns. SVP and Joe Test there as well. Part of the fun. To get ESPN Plus, download the app or go to ESPNPlus.com. You know, TJ is still playing hurt because that Achilles is not 100% now. No, but he. No. I mean, look. Well, he played hurt. He's forever. a gamer. Of course he is. I was going to ask you, uh, do you do a Joe Tess impersonation after working with him all those years? Oh no, 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 no. No, not at all. No, I, I can't. Who can, who can imitate Joe Tess? Sean Farnham has a real good one. Our really? college basketball okay. colleague. He's, he's very deliberate. I think he just studies Joe Tess. When he doesn't have a college basketball game. Tess is one of a kind. Yes, he is. Second down nine for Kentucky. 
which has passed for all of no yards in his first half. As Rodriguez lays in to Dean, and it's third down, timeout coming for the Bulldogs, trying to get the ball back. Uh, look, we can only promise you one thing tonight, other than the rain. We promise you somebody is going to score at some point. We can't guarantee you Are you that sure it, about that? It's, it, they have to, you not, think. Not, Although not. if lightning comes in, you never know. Exactly. Uh, what do you make of this Georgia team? They still do have that avenue open for the playoff. Yeah, I, I think I sense this. They're a little tight, and maybe the coaching staff is a little tight. You know, they have something to lose now. You know, no more margin for error. So my sense in this game is, look, they're confident that their defense can keep Kentucky from scoring, and they don't want something silly yeah, a wet ball rolling around to cost them the game. So they're a little bit conservative right now. And for Kentucky, you, you can't script this any better. I mean, they're in this thing and things are going well for them. They got to be comfortable with this. Their defense has really played great and they haven't turned the ball over. They're in a good spot. It's a third down and three. We'll find out if George is going to get it back again in this first half. Rodriguez. Wow. He's got the first down. Boy, did he lower the shoulder. Look, there's a young man who is a high school safety. Okay, so he knows how to create some contact. And he did right there for a first down. Now does Kentucky just take a knee and take the ball coming out of halftime? Yeah, there's no reason to really uh, risk anything. Now, if you want to run it, fine. But they're not going to drop back and try and toss it down the field. A lot of bad things could happen for them right now. They're not an accomplished passing team right now. One They're a play. surprise passing team. Yeah, that's right. One play and head off to the locker room. You've shortened this to a 30 minute game. Exactly. Why even one play? Why not a knee? And there it is. Not my first rodeo either, Kesnick. <laughs> Eight first downs and 10 punts and no points, nothing. Welcome back to College Football Primetime on ESPN, presented by Hampton by Hilton. The lights have gone out on the scoring in the first half. Nothing. Kentucky and Georgia. Georgia's still in play for the college football playoff. So the question is, Rod Gilmore, how do you get this pass game on track if you're the Bulldogs? Part of the problem, it's not the sole problem, the receivers for Georgia are struggling to get open. Now, whether they're facing press coverage or off coverage, they're still not having a good time getting them. See, you see combination coverage there, a little hands on the receivers. Even when they're in bail and they're coming down the field, they still are having a tough time. Really physical Georgia, uh, Kentucky secondary having its way right now with the Georgia receivers. So I expect Georgia to come out and throw on early downs to try to take advantage of the one on one coverage. Because right now, running on first and second down has been a challenge, unless DeAndre Swift breaks a couple for you like he's done so far for 81 yards in the first half. A couple of gash plays for him is basically all the Georgia offense so far. Kentucky will see it first here in the second half. And the Wildcats with Rodriguez will have field position at the 34. Quinn Kesnick downstairs. Yeah, the rain has actually picked up in intensity during halftime. It was interesting. Both teams are allowed to bring in new footballs for the second half. And talking to John McDade, who's in charge today, he said you know, they gave him at least a dozen. So you'll have dry footballs to start the third quarter, which may be a time to take a shot or two. The other thing is these, all these ball boys have to work hard to get a dry ball in the game. Quinn, how's the wind? The wind should be Picking the biggest factor. Picking up a little right now, right to left. But you know, both coaches just expressed a hesitancy to throw the football. A lot of possessions, a lot of punts so far in the game. And the weather is certainly a factor. That's A.J. Rose, just short of the 40-yard line. And Jason, in Kentucky's case, Coach Stoops told me specifically that the issue with Bowden when he throws are sight lines. He's not the tallest cat in the world, and George's front is tall. So in obvious throwing downs, it's likely that they will move him. Yeah, they have to move him. And they've tried some cue, but he's taken off and run with the ball and scramble when he didn't find anybody his first read his first option. He's yet to complete a pass blitz coming from the corner and Bowden clears it to the 45 Lynn Bowden Junior with a first down as he got by Wilson. 
you think about numbers first half of these quarterbacks zero yards passing for Kentucky and how about Jake Jake from 28 yards passing does that make any sense to you I, I would say it's predominantly the weather but you showed us with the press coverage the struggles of the receivers getting yeah, open. you know I think there's a reluctance to take that chance particularly for Georgia with young receivers on the outside you can throw in the rain. Bowden a little step through. Oh that's nifty a high school quarterback turned receiver back to quarterback that's beautiful. Yeah nice run again we've talked about his ability to change direction to cut on the dime even on a wet field look at that dipsy do. But listen back to the weather you can throw in the rain. It is wind that is a problem as long as you can keep the ball dry great. But listen these aren't the two best passing teams in college football. So they're even more reluctant to throw in this weather. Your top passing teams wouldn't bat an eye at trying to throw so long as the wind isn't too high. Kentucky's 104th in passing yards. Bowden runs this one again and he jams on the accelerator right near the marker. Lynn Bowden Jr. said growing up he was a big fan of Marcus Mariota in part because of the Oregon Ducks jerseys but also his elusiveness. He's got another first down. Yeah, and he can thank the inside of his offensive line. Jackson and Fortner did a good job of blocking for him but I tell you what they're not keeping the dirt off his back. Dude, I, I, how much bleach are they going to need <laughs> for his jersey by the end of this night? I mean the whole back of it is grass stains. Oh uh, yes indeed but right now up front he didn't care about it. He's getting some good blocks by those big guys up front. Mesh is good for Rose and he's got no lane so it's second down and nine for Kentucky as the Kobe Dean makes a stop. Uh, the ball boys Quinn said it that's a big job tonight. Big job. Well, they got one of the best seats in the house normally. They get a little bit wet today. A little Quinn is it a little wet down there. The, the wind the wind is picked up from the first half is much stronger right now right to left perhaps you can see the raindrops slanting in that direction. So right to left means it would help Kentucky if exactly. they try to throw now at Kentucky's back. Play clock down to four. They run this option and it's Rose who spun around and he does sag for a couple of yards third and long. Well if you're Kentucky and you're thinking play selection here you probably with the wind at your back have a chance at three points which would be huge for anybody right. So you don't want a mistake here. I think if they if they take the ball out of Bowden's hands right now I'd be shocked. You think in this tempest they kick. I think so. I don't think on a fourth down you go get a chance to get up with a field goal if you can. But right now in this big third down I would expect Bowden to keep the ball. Third and six. Bowden they tried to go high flag comes in maybe a face mask. Flag is in. It's a first down. If it stands, we'll see. How about his toughness? He's coming back. Yeah, Logan Stenberg, left guard. Yeah, they go high with the mitt and miss the face mask, and so yeah, they got very little bit, if any. Yeah, but it was Stenberg, 71, who had a little hold going on before that which really pushes them out of field goal range. Youngstown's finest out of the shotgun. You better have a spy on this quarterback. Even if you have a spy cue is he fast and quick enough to handle Bowden. Bowden loads it up down the sideline for Wagner and he has no chance to high point and it's out of bounds. Got a punt here right. Well I don't think you can make a field goal from this range with the condition of the field a little sloppy and a wet football. Yeah that's why I get the idea that last play 
but not on third down because it kind of leaves you. Yeah. It's a great point. You're not going to field this punt if you're Georgia. You're just going to be in, in punt, fake, protect. It's too dangerous to try to catch this kick. Yeah, and Georgia's had poor field position all night. Duffy allows the coverage to get back. And this ends up out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. Up the sideline to the 13. Georgia again rough field position 10 18 to go in the third still scoreless. No score as we take a look at tonight's PlayStation player impact rating and it's the Andre Square who's yet to have a tackle attempt broken entering play tonight the sophomore linebacker and DeAndre Swift who tonight is at nine yards a carry after dropping to about five last week. He's been the major offense tonight. Well, 81 yards rushing for him tonight, attacking the perimeter, their outside zone or stretch play they've used to get him to the edge, and it's worked. That's that's something to look for for them to come back to. You know, that outside zone offense, which they use a bunch, James Coley said it might be something he discards because of the wet weather. We've not seen that yet tonight. Well, that's because they're not getting anything inside. Right now, 95 Bohannon, 91 Taylor on that defensive line. They're winning. They're winning up front against what may be the best offensive line in college football. A little nosy safety. Corker sneaking around. Another run inside, and that's not going much of anywhere. Yeah, they, they've they've got nothing inside. Matt Barry in the studio. That's a much needed win for yeah. Justin Fuente Needed by the that. Way. Yep. Seven drives tonight by Georgia five have been inside their 20. This drive as well they've had poor field position all night. They still have not run a play in Kentucky territory. This run is swallowed up and gouged by Oates. Yeah here comes here come the boo boards. The boo birds. He is feeling his Oates. Well you heard. Kirby Smart talked to Q at halftime about the difficulty of throwing and the field condition. Not, the field's pretty good. I think it's just the, the rain concerns him. The wind is in his face right now. Kentucky played along and got a stop. After allowing a 74 yard run for a touchdown on the second play last week against Arkansas, the Cats only gave up 231 more yards. So this is a defense feeling confident. As this ball's juggled by Ali, it's on the ground. My goodness, what a disaster this would be for Kentucky. Who's got it at the bottom? It's Wildcat football. And that's the kind of play that could be the difference in this game. Wow. Take a chance in the rain. Oof, that is fortunate. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Cheese It, official sponsor of the College Football Playoff, and the Alliance for Lifetime Income. Learn more at retireyourrisk.org. It's a cozy home for Hug at 10 right yeah. there. You know that in our celebration of 150 years of college football, Ugga was one of the top five mascots. He's been voted number one elsewhere. I mean, he is he's clearly across the board. Ralph, the Ralphie, Ralphie is a sight to behold at Colorado. Oh, How'd yeah. the tree do? <laughs> the tree dropped because you were in it earlier this year. Sorry. First down for Kentucky, which still has yet to complete a pass tonight. Bowden trying to change that. 
And he throws it tipped and incomplete. So Georgia has seen the doors swing open tonight. Mizzou lost to Vanderbilt. The only unbeaten team in the SEC East has gone down. Florida, Georgia, Mizzou all tied with one loss. Look, right now you have to say nobody in the East is playing better than Florida. The, the way they played the last couple of weeks, including their loss to LSU, they did look like the cream of the crop in the East. Rodriguez on the run. Quint, you were talking about it earlier, how good Florida looked in that second half of the game against South Carolina. They look unstoppable. Uh, especially considering the gauntlet that they put themselves through the last three weeks. I thought they might be on fumes today. That wasn't the case. Kyle Trask in the second half was outstanding. That's a huge win. Well, Gators Q, now get a bye. Yeah, they get a bye, and they can rest up and get healthy for a November push. And what do you do if you're Kentucky here? You've got zero passing yards deep in your own territory. Do you take a chance and throw it, or do you let your main man, Bowden, scramble and run again? Pressure coming. He spins away from Herring. Flag comes in. Bowden seeking that line to gain. He got there, but it's likely coming back with the flag as the walls were caving in on him. Tackle close to the first down. Marker, but check the flag. Holding. 67. Offense. Take a penalty. Third down. Every time points are on the horizon, the sun sets. <laughs> You're not a happy camper about that. Oh, no. We got a good, I... tough defensive struggle going here. But they got uh, Landon Young last time for a complete tackle takedown. He, as he was trying to protect Bowden. His third and 15, considering the way Kentucky's throwing the ball or not throwing the ball, it might, might as well be third and 40, third and 50. To be clear, I'm all in for a pitcher's duel, by the way. This is like Maddox, Clavin, and Smoltz from back oh, okay. in the day. Right. Here. I'm with you. Screen game, maybe, third and 15. We'll see. Rodriguez stays in to block. It's a deep ball down the sideline. Wagner doesn't have a chance at it. Again, pinned to the sideline on the coverage. Stokes. Well, they'll keep taking those shots every now and then with Wagner, who's six foot five and a former basketball player. They want to give him a chance to, to out jump one of those corners and make a big play. Or draw a PI call, which he's gifted at. You got 11 of them this year. They call him Ahmad Flagner in the Kentucky circles. This is not the best punt from Duffy, and it comes at a bad time. Georgia is going to have outstanding field position and will run a play from Kentucky territory for the first time as Kirby Smart says, let's go, and we'll see if they do when we come back. The final installment coming up and the first installment of Georgia offense in Kentucky Territory, the pilot edition tonight. First time Georgia's run a play in Kentucky real estate comes at 631 in the third via a poor punt. 15 yarder from Duffy. Swift totes it and attacks inside the 25. Swift is. Touchdown. Well, we talked about Swift in the first half getting to the edge. Similar deal, but what balance? He had breaking through that tackle. Wow. Sixth time over 100 total yards in a game for Swift. He has the longest play of the game at 39. And Georgia uncorks a touchdown off of the miss by Duffy. 
An all-league punter goes for 15 yards. And this is turned out by Swift on the first play. Yeah, go back to this play. Just watch what a great big hole he gets because great blocking by Mays there. Right there, and also 79 Wilson washing everything outside, and then just acceleration. And how about the hit and spin from DeAndre Swift? But that job up front by the right side of that line, washing everything out, and a good cutoff block by Trey Hill, the center. Great job. He just turned to Kinley and said, Man, I told you. <laughs> if oh. I'm reading the lips right. <laughs> That play has been working all night. We haven't run it enough. Yeah, yes. Swift has been the man. I mean, yeah, you know, outside zone stretch play, whichever you want for that one. You know, get get him going to the edge and wash everything outside and let Swift pick the hole. Number 98, Ron. You see Sony Michelle on Monday Night Football, one of the many Georgia tailbacks from years past Herschel Walker Robert Edwards no Sean Moreno at all. They've had some backs here haven't they. Oh my goodness. The holes are lined with tremendous running backs. Lincoln ship kicks it away. Kentucky will wait for the fair catch. It looks like. And get it at the 25. Rodriguez does so. Next Saturday, number eight Notre Dame against Michigan from the Big House, 7:30 Eastern on ABC. Michigan in a tight one with Penn State. Scoreless at last check over on ABC right now. The Irish blown loss to Georgia, and we take a look at the college football rankings brought to you by AT&T. What stands out? Well, that's going to change. Uh oh, the strike through is going to go. Bye bye. You don't want a Saturday night strike through. <laughs> By the way, you don't want that if you're an unbeaten in college football. You know, there, there's a there's a debate or discussion as to who really should be listed as number one right now before we get to the committee. A couple weeks until we hear from the committee on the college football playoff rankings for the first time. If you're looking at key wins, LSU jumps off the page. Well, I mean, that's that's the question. You know, if you think about it the way the committee does, they look at top 25 wins, you know, and, and LSU has more top 10 wins than any other undefeated team. So you would think the committee would go, LSU, you're number one. But then there's the eye test and the eye talent test. A lot of folks still like Alabama, like Clemson, and say they'll be there in the end. Kirby said Ohio State's the most complete team on game day this morning. Right, and they have the same issue as others that people question who they play. Crowd is riled up right now. Two to snap it for Bowden. They'll run the option, and Bowden takes a shoulder from Tay Crowder, and it's third down. Tay Crowder, the UGA fan growing up, former basketball player in Pine Mountain, Georgia, a major part of this defense. He had a scoop and score a few weeks ago against Notre Dame. Showed some great speed going 60 yards with that. That 102 for Kentucky is against the defense that is the only one in the country not to allow a rushing touchdown so far this year. Third and four, a lot of movement. Confusion on the Kentucky yep. sideline in terms of what personnel and where. Remember, they got a set for one second. They do, and it's going to be a timeout, Kentucky. Right on it, Quinn. That was a mess from the start. Kentucky may want that timeout later in a one score game under five to go in the third. College football primetime on ESPN presented by Hampton by Hilton. Seven nothing Georgia as the remnants of Nestor have come over this lovely city and the wind is starting to whip the flag. Yeah you got the wind at your back if you're Kentucky but they don't have much of a passing attack right now. Makes you wonder if they'll start to consider Sawyer Smith as an option to, to throw the ball for them. He's the reserve quarterback, the typical pocket passer, the transfer. Third and four, a run. And Bowden lost the football. George has got it. It's a turnover for LeCount. Turnover number one.
Now the question is whether Bowden was down because that ball came out as he hit the ground. The rolling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. First down. Watch the contact. Oh, yeah, that's no, out. That ball is out. It was the hit by Reed that knocked the ball out. Big hit. That ball comes down before Bowden's knee touches the ground. <laughs> he gets the spikes and he lets it eat. Everybody's got a gimmick now, right? A turnover chain, a spike turnover squad. spike, turnover pad, whatever you call it. Wow. Maybe sponsored by Aaron Boone with the word savage on the back there. That's, that's not real gold, right? I, I, I don't think they'd let that out of the ring. <laughs> It'd be a rust component. <laughs> Bowden's on the phone. Georgia's on the march. It's got to be swift again, right? He just hit for 39 and a touchdown. Here, he navigates his way to the second level again, and the third level, and a first down for Swift. He's a battering ram. Matt Barry in the studio. Penn State still unbeaten. Hoping to stay that way. How about DeAndre Swift just starting to take over this game? Yeah. Clear momentum shift. Field level. You feeling it? Absolutely. So now it's Harrion. And he's a little more Brian indecisive. The, the hole wasn't as presented to him, and it's second down coming up. Kentucky I, playing. Sorry, Rod. Kentucky just playing without Cash Daniel. I just wanted to mention that their middle linebacker yeah, he, who left he, the field in the second quarter. He, he told us earlier that he he was looking forward to this game because it's a physical game, but that he knew he wouldn't be able to walk for two or three days afterwards. Prediction sadly, came true a little yeah, early, apparently. Sadly, prophetic. Second down and six. The wind really picking up. Harry and stays in. Werner looks a little confused. Kentucky sideline is upset, and John McDade steps in to give them the right to substitute. And now it looks like first Georgia's call timeout. Half, Georgia. It will be a 30-second timeout. No, the internet loves when players bump into officials. Warner just did there. You know, th this seven-point lead feels like 14 or 20, given how difficult it's been for Kentucky to move the ball. And so if you're Kirby Smart, you're this far into Kentucky territory. You're thinking any kind of a score, a field goal, anything, starts to feel like it's putting the game out of reach. Yep, you wouldn't imagine 10 would do it tonight for Tennessee at Alabama 9 Eastern right here on ESPN that'll follow our game. But yeah it, it feels like that doesn't it. I mean Kentucky still has yet to complete a pass. Yeah. In this game. Rod with that in mind if you're Kentucky do you turn up the heat. Is, is this second and third down potential blitz. Yeah and, and the reason I would do it Q is that I don't fear the second Georgia down. receivers the Kentucky secondary has held up well against them. So why not turn up the heat here. it again and he tumbles down to the 12 so third down and two not the kind of game you would expect from from I'm sure the weather has a lot to do with it but he was looking forward to this week after a, a tough outing last week Harry and again hunting that first down he's got it turning his back first and goal Georgia yeah so you get a short punt which was like a turnover and then you get a turnover and all of a sudden Georgia's offensive line smells it and they start to take over a little bit. Kentucky had been holding them off for a while but these guys are so big up front so strong. Biggest offensive line in the country for the Georgia Bulldogs. You got a couple guys 330 pounds. Yeah this is NFL stuff you saw last week. Comparison to the average NFL lineman. 
to the corner. Touchdown, Harriet. What a nice move by Harry and Jamari Brown in the secondary there had the leverage had the edge but a little dip inside got Brown to go out go inside and Heron was able to get outside in pure speed but Brown had the leverage but gave it up. Harry missed the game with the back strain last week against South Carolina and how about the last. 45 minutes for Georgia. If you're a Bulldog fan, you turn on the game. You say, what are we doing? It's no score at halftime. Then Mizzou loses. Bad punt, touchdown. Yep, touchdown. You're up 14 to nothing. Yeah. You're exactly where you want to be, and you got Florida in a couple of weeks. You could say Kirby Smart played the long game. Yep. You know, just slowly hanging in there, not forcing, not pushing anything, and then you get basically two turnovers. You get two turnovers with a short field, two touchdowns in the last four minutes and 26 seconds. You ready for a Buick drive recap? Get behind the wheel? I, I thought every now and then, yeah. Yeah, here we go. Okay, you got one? Oh, yeah. how about that? Uh, lucky. Yeah, well, here's the fumble. Bowden on a run gets knocked over, and the ball comes out with a big hit by J.R. Reed, and then Harrion with a nice move on Jamari Brown to get outside and get to the edge. It's brought to you by Buick. Our drive recap. Two touchdowns last 426. And how about J.R. Reed, an impressive young man. We spent some time with him. A transfer from Tulsa. And we were talking to him and Aziz Ojolari at the same time, the freshman linebacker. And, and we asked Aziz about the loss last week. And he had given us a thoughtful answer. And J.R. said, look, I've been around enough of these to know about the college football playoff loss and all that stuff that he just hasn't seen enough of them yet to know how to put it away as much as a veteran does as this return for Johnson gets into open space for Kentucky inside the 40 so a swing back for the Wildcats off the kickoff it gives Kentucky a relatively short field now inside the 40 this is the best field position starting field position they've had tonight. And this is a really good return. Once he finds the hole, look at him run right through a potential tackle. That's a really good job. No red shirts around him. Pursuit finally got him, but this sets up Kentucky with the chance to get back in, to get a score. You know, we've talked about what Kentucky gains from Bowden at the quarterback position. He touched the ball all the time. You do, by virtue of him being there, lose your best receiver and your best yes. punt returner. Yep, that's as exactly well. right. Yep. Off the 58 yard return from Johnson. Kentucky with both. Looking for a crease and he gets stood like up. Blocking sled style. Back to your point about J.R. Reed and talking with him. This was a tough week for the Georgia players. They had friends, classmates, family members all, you know, trying to talk about the playoff. Oh, we're in bad shape or whatever. And he said, look, I I'm veteran enough to say one week at a time. You know, we got to focus on Kentucky. It's a little harder for some of the younger players to do that. But, you know, you're telling family members, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> they, they don't want to hear that. No, they were going to talk to you and they're going to tell you what they saw last week. Bowden cuts it upfield. That step through again. And Wagner engages a little bit with a face mask coming against DJ Daniel. It's a gain of 21 and then some with a marker in. There's a flag. Into the play. Personal foul. Grasping the face mask. Number 14 defense. That will be enforced from the end of the run. Half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. We talk about a spy or one on one. J.R. Reed has a shot at Bowden one on one. He gives him a great move and gets by him. And he's not an easy guy to tackle in the end zone. You saw the face mask at the end of, at the end of that. His yeah. vision and his cutting ability from field level. I mean, it, it is just gorgeous to watch. Antoine Randall L. Huh? Reminds you of that a bit, Q. Yeah, he's got kind of that that uh, crossover dribble like move, you know, plant and cut. A little Allen Iverson going on there. 
Look at you with the basketball knowledge. Look, I've watched a basketball game or two. First and goal, Kentucky. Georgia still has not allowed a rushing touchdown this year. Rodriguez won't get it. Yeah, and it's tough to get it inside there with Devontae Wyatt, 6'3, 301 pounds there, and Barnett, number 94, 304. You're not really moving those two guys out of the middle too often. Your best bet is to get to the edge. You got Wagner here near side with his six foot five height. Good matchup, Q. End of the quarter. Bowden to run. Bowden to throw. Kicked around incomplete. Rodriguez had it clang off his leg and his hands. And we will open the third quarter with Kentucky out of the end zone. That is the end of the third. But challenging. This looks like Nebraska Mizzou from oh. back in the day. Matt Davis. This is all to him, and he beats it all up. Kentucky fans are going, what are we doing? Georgia still in play for the college football playoff and a third and goal leading by two scores. There's your big guy down there. Six foot five basketball player. This is two down territory. Field goal does you no good if you're a Kentucky fan. Lynn Bowden Jr. To throw. He breaks out of the pocket. Stalls. Fires. Incomplete. He wanted Wagner well beyond the goal line by a couple of yards. Now you're going. You don't have any choice. A field goal doesn't do you any good. You, you, you're having trouble scoring. You can't count on getting back down here three times. So what's your play call? Well, for me, I still want Bowden to move with the ball. I still want him to look for Wagner, but be aware, backside away. He had a guy open last time. Be 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 uh, be aware of that and be willing to stop and throw back. There's Wagner over there. Shorter distance. Easier jump ball there. Safety leaning that direction and the play clock hit zero. Mark Stoops timeout. got the timeout. Second charge timeout of the half. Kentucky. Oh, he can't believe it. Stoops is livid. Into the studio, Matt Perry. It will be a 30 second. I don't know the hat the hat's playing pretty well. I think the hat's enjoying the himself in Manhattan. Operator please put little, little Manhattan. 51 Lawrence? One, four, five, Oh yeah. One, <laughs> the game clock. Lawrence Kansas. Oh, Lord, yeah. <laughs> not, not not little Manhattan. No that'll come up later. Yeah, though. We'll Kansas, get that Kansas way. State will have some fun. Oh yeah. Later on with that being maybe a better rivalry but uh, fourth and goal out of the timeout again another timeout maybe you'd rather have. For later a little trouble getting organized and getting lined up and again you've got Wagner on the short side of the field over here but he's going to have to contend with one two defenders if you throw it that way Yeah, the count cheat in that direction. Now he clears, but the pressure comes, forcing Bowden the other direction. And too high, incomplete, but a flag is in. There's a flag down. We'll check the marker. It's on Kentucky. So the Wildcats still have yet to complete a pass in this game. Yeah, really good job by the Georgia defense. Really good job by Dan Lanning, the defensive coordinator. Had a spy go at the last minute to chase Bowden so that he didn't have all the room in the world to run around. You'll see Twinney Reed, he's the spy. He cuts off the edge, and Bowden had no place to go with that. You mentioned Dan Lanning, the defensive coordinator for Georgia. Uh, we chatted with him yesterday, a former third grade PE teacher turned college football coach. He sent out a bunch of emails, made a bunch of phone calls, and now is a defensive coordinator in his very early time in his career as Swift 
breaks a tackle from Dort and ends up a yard shy of the first down. Well, this is what you expect of your superstars. Take over and control the game, and Swift has done that. Flag is down. Your point about Lanning is a good one. After the play was over, personal foul and necessary roughness. Number 95, Oof. defense. Bohanna. From the end of the run. Automatic first down. Bohanna, talk, you talk about landing. So how badly do you want to be a college football coach? Yeah. You're a high school coach, and you're not getting any responses to the emails and resumes you talk about. <laughs> and he got in his car and drove from Kansas City to Pittsburgh. That's a long trip. To try to get FaceTime. And he did. Got some attention. Ended up an assistant coach, then moved to Alabama, became a graduate assistant. Was living on a shoestring budget. He said a lot of ramen involved. As Swift on the run off the penalty. He's just got a different gear. Yep, yep. you said it, partner. I mean, that speed. He's got a guy out there for Kentucky with the leverage, ready to tackle them, to force him inside. And he just runs right around Eccles. That is pure speed, confidence. That's awesome. Getting back to Lanning for a moment, you know who the real star was in that? His wife. Yeah. I mean, every time he came home and said, uh, honey, I want to go chase an $800 a month job, she's like, OK, let's do it. Yeah, I, I mean, what a saint, right? And he said, look, she knew what, what we were going to do and she was encouraging and now he ends up with a, a major coaching career as Swift crashes into plus territory again but there's something to be said for players as well I mean for for anybody who wants to do something that bad and he said he's just loved football for so long it was inside of him and he chased it it's about believing in yourself and Betting taking, on yourself. taking your shot yep and he took his shot and it paid off for him. And his defense has put a number on Kentucky today and Kentucky's defense has had their hands full with this offense in the second half with short fields. Marion on the move to the 35. Matt Barry in the studio. What you got? Oh boy. Thank you, Matt. We will see if Alabama gets challenged. Great uh, interview with Tua and Steve Levy on game day earlier today, talking about what Tua wants to do in the future. In terms of his improvement, communication, one of those things he was talking about. Perry and changing direction and this is the Georgia run game yeah. people expect to see down here. Well they've gone all in too. They brought in an extra lineman to line up as a tight end to give them two tight ends with Charlie Warner cue so they're just grinding it. Yeah they lean on you pretty good all game and you see the quarterback Jake Fromm there check change the play at the line of scrimmage to, to get him in the right run. Legal substitution on the offense 12 minute formation a five yard penalty second down. You talk about leaning on people, Quint. Georgia in the second half has run 14 plays. How many passes do you guys remember? Uh, not one. Yeah, none. 14 runs, no passes. Well, look, what they did was they said, DeAndre Swift, go do it. We got this big offensive line we think is the best in the country. We think you're one of the top running backs. Go to it. We don't need to try and worry about developing receivers and whatnot. Let's go win the game with what we do well. Kirby Smart said that to us in the meeting. He said, I'm not going to play this game to appease everybody and, and see the fireworks passing wise if, if we're not able to because of the rain or whatever we're going to try and win the game and there's Swift and that bodes well for Georgia when Fromm's pass attempts are kind of manageable less than 30 right yeah yeah he's at 11 today they win when he doesn't throw more than 30 times right Quinn yeah, and, and I think, you know, this team's going to have to throw better down the road to, to beat the Floridas. No question. Team. 
and, but today was just not the day to develop that because of the conditions. No question. So you got to check your ego, your passing ego at the door today. Too windy, too rainy. Yeah, I don't know that Fromm has that much of an ego with throwing the football. There's one area where he does have a little bit of an ego. Uh, singing on the run, Swift to the 29. Make that two areas. Yes, he believes he can sing. <laughs> J.R. Reed is not a fan of Fromm taking hip hop songs and singing them like country songs. But you know where the ego comes in is here's a guy who repeatedly had to prove himself here had to prove he was a better quarterback than Jacob Eason had to prove he was a better quarterback than Justin Fields both of them ended up transferring but you can understand why he would look at it and you go again you, I haven't won you over yet he's won him over now substitution allowed fourth down and four he's a local kid from Warner Robins. Couple of hours away from here in Athens. Fourth down from first pass of the second half. A connection inside the 25. First down for Pickett. And the mock celebration from the crowd that they've seen the ball in the air. I, I like Pickens as a receiver, 6'3, 190 pound freshman. He will get better and better. They will need him when they get to November and they have those big games to try to win the East. And how about Fromm? Yeah, we got one there. Pickens known for his circus catches. That one in a little bit of traffic, having to come back to the ball. And nicely done as we move down to nine minutes. For a Georgia team that suddenly finds itself in a tie in the loss column in the SEC East. Swift met low by Dort. And this game started to get away from Kentucky after the bad punt early in the third quarter. That's Watson down for Kentucky. But you're right, short fields, yep. the death knell so far for the Wildcats. We'll step aside. Georgia driving and he's back. This season, for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities. Allstate makes a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Georgia's up two scores and driving. At the 20-yard line. Two scores feel like three or four as the offensive line for Georgia has taken over since midway in the third quarter. George has rattled off 224 rush yards and that has been the story of this series even without the deluge the last couple of years. Harry and short. They keep picking on that left side though where they've gotten great play out of Kinley number 66 and Thomas 71 most of the afternoon well most of the second half I should say when Thomas and Kindley are together coming into this game Georgia had averaged 12 and a half yards a carry running behind them when they're together I think DeAndre Swift appreciates having them out there yeah, right he's been having a heck of an afternoon particularly in the second half with those two over there. With the rain beating Sanford Stadium, Harry steps through tackles, and you might be seeing the fatigue now for Kentucky. First and goal. Yeah, they've been getting pounded for a while. A little double team again. Kinley 66, a little help from Hill 55, and then Harry stays on his feet as Taylor tries to grab him. Harry yeah. gave you a little bicep there at the end of well, the run. Oh, he should. He this showed some strength. This offensive line, their ability to engage and then continue to move their feet through contact, just churning and chop, 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 chop. Q, the smallest guy is 320 pounds. Yeah, they're big. Love, I love the athleticism and, and bendiness of the left tackle, Thomas. Swift on the attack again what do you mean bendiness well, he's flexible he's a real athlete and, and, and you watch he's not stiff at all and he gets his hands on you he drops his hips continues to move his feet he can play at awkward angles comfortably you know he's not stiff he doesn't bend at the waist 
He, he's just so smooth, pick yeah. number 71 on the left. Well, and once he gets his hands on one of the defensive linemen, he just keeps churning those feet, driving with his leg power. And that's why they've, they've had success running behind him. Swift once more extends for the score. He's a ball of fire right now. Yeah, lots of credit for Swift, but man, that left side of the offensive line darn near pushed Kentucky's D line back into the end zone. And we talked about Thomas and what he did at the left tackle. Kinley 66. Look at his push. Look at, they're on skates. That defensive line, they're on skates right now. The 179 yards and a couple of the scores. Run with the ball breaking the goal line, playing for a touchdown. They're going to stop play to review it. Video review. You see anything that suggests overturn? Well, let's take another look. You need indisputable video evidence to overturn the call on the field. He looks. Oh no. No, looks good. You don't see the knee come down until his whole body is in the end zone. What? There's the knee. But still, I mean, at that angle, he's he's beyond the plane. He's broken the plane. The rain on the plane, <laughs> if you will. So 6:24 to go. Missouri has lost already tonight. Georgia has Florida in a couple of weeks. And you look and you say, yeah, it was 0 0 after the first half. But this has been the will in position that people want to see out of the Bulldogs. Yeah, I think that's right. With the understanding and recognition that you can't do this to Alabama, Florida, LSU. And Kirby Smart would say, yeah, I know that, and we'll keep developing our passing game. After we just weren't going to do it today. The ruling on the field of touchdown stands. Now, I, I think Jeff Fromm would relish throwing in this weather, but not with young receivers who had trouble today getting open. Yeah, I mean, for Jake Fromm, it's not a learn much game. He's 9 for 12, 35 yards. He's got one completion in the second half, but again, they haven't needed it. Right. So if you're looking for, okay, they check this box and that box, you're not going to get a whole lot of that out of the passing game tonight. And he could care less about the numbers. That's right. Blanket chip. It's good. 21 0 Georgia, 6 24 to go. ESPN College Football is presented by Hampton by Hilton. College football stays here. Book now at Hampton.com and in part by Burger King. Get four cheesy tots for just a buck for a limited time only at Burger King. Uh, George has got the lead. Quint, what time of year did you say it was during the break to us? Huddle around the heater time. Are you doing it too? No, not yet. I wait till the max in, in, in uh, November. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trip to Kalamazoo and then you're on the heater. Is that what you're saying? Got to be sub 35. <laughs> He's got a rule. I like that. George has got a touchdown in three straight drives to take this 21 nothing lead, and Kentucky will have it at the 25 when we come back. Go huddle around your heater. We're back in 90 seconds. So to this point Kentucky has yet to complete a pass so we have all these stats for you that might not be relevant if they do complete a pass so we're just going to give them all to you so you know what will happen if they don't complete a pass so last 20 years no teams attempted 10 or more without a completion that's Kentucky right now and then here's another one for you uh, Georgia has held five teams to zero pass yards in a game including the Cal State Fullerton juggernaut back in 1992 which seems oh, like a baseball only, game only yesterday right yeah, yeah 1992. Yeah. In other words, this is a rarity. Big time. Yes. Will it last, though? Will after this play. Rose with a run, and he's got a first down to the 40. Let me ask you this. Are you surprised we haven't seen Sawyer Smith, the number two quarterback who was injured, missed the last couple games, but was said to be healthy and available, ready to go today? I'm, I'm not personally, 
because he was dinged up had the fractured wrist shoulder issue uh, and Georgia is an unforgiving defense Quint uh, you surprised he he's been throwing throughout this game he's got his helmet on now with chin straps looks like he's kind of eager to get in the game to, to get in, to get a feel for it he yeah. played very well in their loss to Florida I felt and then he got hurt and then had two two subpar efforts after that when he wasn't 100 percent well he told us this week he was good to go that he went full speed with the first and second units and he hadn't done that in weeks matter of fact the two of you bonded over wrestling oh yeah big right. time wrestling Bizarre. fan yeah he's a stone cold guy I'm from the generation before ultimate warrior etc. Ace Bowden. Let's check in and see what Matt Barry's got cooking for us. Oh, doggy. Wow. Those what? That's no fun. The khakis are getting wrinkled tonight over on ABC. What has happened to Michigan? Offense has really struggled for the Wolverines. Don Brown's defense has carried the load for the most part, but they're trailing big. Bowden on the move, and there is a completion. There it is. First down, all those stats get wiped away, you and know, we apologize. The moment you put those stats up, you knew that was it. Yeah, I'm like, okay, the, <laughs> the broadcaster Jay. Okay, we saw it Thursday night with McAfee and the UCLA punt team uh, and Stanford, and I was getting tweets about that from White Sox fans saying it's real. Any baseball fan thinks it's real. <laughs> it's just regression well, to the mean. You, you just did it. Yeah, come on, you're you're an intelligent guy. Don't put you me in that fight. I didn't have a hand in it. Wrong with you. <laughs> Rose inside the 40-yard line. I I don't know. I, you've done TV since for ESPN since what 1996. Ever. You think I put the graphics up? <laughs> you have you seen the truck that we have the show come out of? You have such power. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Just asking for tweets to come my direction, Rod Gilmore. <laughs> thank you. Second down at five for Kentucky. Oh. Bowden, well, pop pass incomplete. Now, if you if you look forward for Kentucky, they're still chasing to become bowl eligible. It's a team that won 10 games last year. In order for them to do that, they will have to have a passing attack down the stretch. Now, that probably means Sawyer Smith is the best option for that, and it allows him to get Bowden back to his number one spot of receiver where he is really dynamite. I mean, it's a 12, 20 plus carries or catches. He's got 114 career catches, 30 this year. Kentucky with a loss tonight would drop to three and four, and they'll have angry Missouri coming up next week over on SEC Network. Bowden scrambles yeah. for a first down. And, and listen, I have all the respect in the world for Bowden. He is a great, great player. He's going to play an awful lot on Sundays, but you, you can't play four, five, six weeks without a passing attack weather or whatever you have to be able to throw the ball in the SEC you can't line up and knock everybody off the ball by the way we saw a close up of Bowden and people have asked about the pink on his face that's that's for his grandmother who passed away he's honoring her with that as he's done the last two weeks young man who grew up in Youngstown Ohio lived in a house of 15 folks as he completes a pass to Cleveland Thomas Jr. And it'll be second down. Hey, next Saturday, number eight Notre Dame, number 16 Michigan. You talk about angry. Wolverines might be real mad. That's at the big house. Oh, yeah, or, or sleepwalking. Yeah. 7.30 Eastern on ABC. You got to sneak that in or the promo doesn't count. <laughs> That's always a good rivalry. That's always a good one. It's been one-sided in recent days. As has this nine straight wins for Georgia against UK. 
Second down and one with a shutout remain intact. Bowden lets it rip to the sideline and a flag is in. As the rush was coming, there's been some holding on the edge trying to protect Bowden. And again, another holding call. Yeah, Uga's, Uga's in a little house there. I'd like to see Uga again. He's got a. Who doesn't like Uga? Holding. He's got a bay window. Offense. It's nice. Down penalty. Second down. He's got the s'mores going, maybe fireplace in the back. Didn't we yeah. see? We yeah. saw Uga last night at the homecoming. Yeah. Riding in style and some big truck or so, all decked out and whatnot. He drools up the, the window there. He drools it yeah. up and steams it up on a chilly <laughs> night like tonight. And then he can't see what's going on. Did you go intrepid report that on your own? Did you did you test to see? You see the, no. the tongue on the window yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> down there? I'm, I'm tight with the Yale Bulldogs, so oh, you are. He wouldn't really like that. You travel in those circles. Bowden unloads to the end zone, and that's too much. Into the hedges. <laughs> Third down and 12. Kirby Smart's team again. You just want to win after losing to South Carolina. I know we're looking into the future of the college football playoff, et cetera, et cetera. But with the rain and everything, evaluating the past game's tough as we talked about, they just want to win. It's understandable. But look, remember where this was. It took basically two turnovers and two short fields for Georgia to get on track. Yep. You know, other than that, it, it was a, a wrestling match with no one getting. The advantage. Bowden the other direction. That's a jump ball and it's batted away, nearly intercepted. That's DJ Daniel. Look, and, and Kirby Smart is doing the right thing. He has the focus about winning this game, keeping his team healthy, and moving on to the next week. It's the rest of the world. You know, the fans and everybody else and odds odds makers and people who who vote in the rankings to look at this and go oh well you got a problem down the line Kirby doesn't care about that right now but what have you seen that inspires confidence going forward what improvement did you see if you're a Bulldog fan well as a fan yeah you're still worried about your offense the passing game in particular fourth and 12 for the game Bowden down the sideline and incomplete for Wagner you know with Kirby smart he said something that rarely does a coach say to us in meetings when we talk about millennials. And we'll tell you what that is when we come back. Can Tennessee hold those receivers down? Sports Center after that. SVP's got it for you. Post game reaction from that game. Herbie's biggest takeaway for Michigan Penn State and Yankees Astros. Game six post game coverage as well with analysis. Stanford Steve tweeted at me a couple weeks ago that they're off on Saturdays. That's clearly not true. He <laughs> lied to me. Uh, we were talking about Kirby Smart going to the break. The one thing he said to us that's rather surprising is he said, you can't tell kids to tune out social media. Right. It's too prevalent. Uh, some coaches, a lot of coaches will say, uh, just, just don't pay any attention to it. That's not possible. No. Kids are on it, so you have to use it, and you have to use stories to your advantage. Games like Clemson and UNC, right? Yep. Yep. Upset possibilities. You use the noise to your advantage somehow. Right. When he has them together in the locker room, he tells them about what's out there, what they will hear, what the narrative is, and whatnot, but to hang together. So, you know, he's prepping them for it instead of telling them, hey, you know, don't don't listen. He, you can't. I mean, yeah. everybody's going to be on it, or you're going to hear it from friends and family. You know who's going to hear some good things is DeAndre Swift. Yeah. 21 for 179 and two, and he really, uh, on short fields, won the game for Georgia. Well, he, he took control of the game, or I should say that offensive line did, and he had some spectacular runs behind them. And you need a superstar to step up. It was 0-0, and he made the plays in the third quarter that got Georgia going. 21-0 Georgia, Alabama coming next against Tennessee. The Tide trying to remain unbeaten as well. The Georgia defense pitches a shutout tonight after losing against South Carolina on a late field goal miss, the legal shift, the whole shebang. Georgia's back in the win column and goes to 6-1 and one tonight. And you know what it is for Georgia? Survive and advance. They said they're in the playoff now, and they just needed to get a win, and they got it.